This has become a favorite in my home for the holidays, uh, whether it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, or even both. Uh, one of the things I like about it is the addition of cream cheese. It has a smooth, creamy texture that makes it a bit different than your traditional pumpkin pie. And in fact, my wife, who really isn't a pumpkin pie fan, loves this recipe. So, let's get started. The first thing we would like to do is have an 8-ounce package of softened cream cheese. You want to leave that on your counter for a little bit uh, so it's easier to blend. If you forget, no worries. You can microwave it at a lower power setting for just a little while. Now we're going to give this a quick blend. From here, we are going to add either two small cans or in this case, one large can of pumpkin puree. Make sure you're using 100% pumpkin and not pumpkin pie film. You're going to want to have a rubber spatula to get everything out of that can, scraping down the sides and the bottom. So we're going to give this a blend until everything is mixed together. Okay, from here we're going to add one cup of sugar. and one quarter teaspoon of salt. Don't run this on high or you're gonna have sugar flying everywhere. Pretty easy peasy so far. Up next, we're gonna take one egg plus the yolks from two additional eggs. Lightly beat those. You can use a fork or a whisk. Whisk, excuse me, add that into our mixing bowl along with a half cup, a half and half. And a quarter cup or a half stick of melted butter. Now this is another thing I like about this recipe. You're gonna buy a cart and a half and a half. You're gonna have a lot left over, so what better time to pick up some Kahlua while you're at it? Have some white Russians for Thanksgiving evening, right? Kind of give this one last pull away from the sides of the bowl. And we're going to bring it down the home stretch. Finally, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. A final mix and we're ready to go. That should just about do it and that brings me to my next favorite thing about this recipe and that is the fact that it yields not one but two pies. So perfect. You're making one for home, one to take to a holiday gathering elsewhere. Typically I make these this recipe Wednesday evening before Thanksgiving because you're going to want this to set up in the fridge after they bake. And then guess what I'm having for breakfast on Thanksgiving morning? Pumpkin pie? That is correct. Give it a try. That could become a holiday tradition of yours. I know it is mine. Just kind of evenly divide that up. We don't have to measure this part. One gets a little more than the other. No worries there. They're going to turn out great, I promise. Looking good. From here, let's transfer that to our big green egg. Like I said, that's set up and locked in at 350 degrees. Today I'm using the two-tier multi-level rack. Since my big green egg is like a convection oven, it gives me the ability to cook two pies at once. We're gonna let these sit. In the egg, 350 for 50 to 60 minutes, and we'll back and check on them in just a bit. Everyone, we're back. It's time to remove our pies from the big green egg. Still locked in at 350. They've cooked uh, about 60 minutes, as you can see. I'm using the convector basket and the two-tier multi-level rack that enables me to do two pies at once. I'm going to give those a little transfer our counter area. Rocking those oven 
this as well. Now we're going to chill these overnight to help your pies set. They are delicious, either chilled or at room temperature. You can also serve them with a whipped topping if you so desire. That's it.